My name is Michael. Watch me travel across every state in America. I'll visit some famous places, I'll visit some weird places, but more importantly, I'll try to interview the most inspiring and unique creatives I can find. Along the way, I'll talk gear and what I use to make it all happen. So watch four seconds of me in front of walls and enjoy the rest of this vlog. So we are now in Michigan, maybe about an hour away from Detroit. I gotta like practice my freestyle because we are gonna go to Eight Mile and enter some underground rap tournaments against Papa Doc. We just passed by Toledo. I rob and bake. So I need the dough and need the dough. Maybe I won't battle. This is George Brady Elementary School. Yes, I do ride the short yellow bus. Going into an abandoned school. Reminds me of Children of Men. You've seen that movie, right? I don't know about you guys, but I think it's kind of messy in here. I have a feeling if I was in a horror movie, I'd be the type to hear something and then go towards the noise. Yeah, I'd definitely uh, be one of the first to go. Don't touch anything in the human poo room. How pretty do I look? So we are on the way right now to meet up with Elena, who is a uber talented photographer. I always love sitting down and talking with photographers. See, I don't like the cars, but I do like the arches. Maybe I can work with it. I used to be a photojournalist, so I like to do that kind of photography too, but I like candid shots most of all. Would you like coffee? Yeah, something like, because you look posh. I want to do something posh. What do you feel obliged to do every time you have a shoot? I find something to like about them and that's what I want to show in my photos. I want to show something about the person that I like or what is there to like about them. Or how your mom sees you, for example, you know. You're the most beautiful person in the world for your mom. And it's so easy to work with you. That's why I think it'll be like, not, not many people are like that. What was the genesis behind you going into picking up a camera? Well, my father and grandfather were both photographers. I didn't want to be like them. I think I wanted to be a doctor like most of the kids in Russia. <laughs> I think I was a teenager when I snapped the photo of my friend or something and she loved it so much and that I was just, I, I don't know, I loved the feeling of her liking it. That's a really good feeling when someone tells you that no one ever showed them the way you did. Like why did you choose portrait photography of all the different kinds of photography? Yeah, that's actually interesting because I'm, I, I think I'm an introvert and even if I need some time alone and be by myself and read a book, I do like people a lot. If I see a beautiful landscape, I will need to put a girl there or a person. I do empathize with them a lot. <laughs> Remember my dream to become a doctor? I would be a terrible doctor because I would be like, you know, feeling all, this, all these feelings. One of the things why I like portrait photography, sometimes, for example, for girls, when they're heartbroken, a friend like broke up with someone. I would like to make to do a photo session for her and she will be heartbroken and sad, you know? And I will get it to the point that she will feel amazing after this because, yeah, I will show her sad or anything like that, but she will be beautifully sad, you know? <laughs> I think the most important thing apart from posing a person, I think it's not even that important. It's, it's to like a person because if you don't like them, if you don't empathize with them, you, it, it's not going to work. My name is Jamie. I am from Detroit. Pick three words to describe Elena. <clears throat> Elena is spunky, she is comforting, and she is adventurous. We got to talking a little bit too, you know, just sort of sharing the same frustration. Not being able to walk down the street without getting catcalled. I got a personality. You gotta stop treating me like a piece of meat. We are now heading to an abandoned church. Hey. Yes, center opening. Turn left. There's stairs in the corner. that will take you up to that left door up there. So you can run it off. 
it's kind of sad just imagining what it was like before when it was full of life and now when it's dilapidated holy what word did I just use did I use it correctly so I am here at the belly art studio to meet Frank can't wait to sit down with him and have a little chat Detroit has been known as the Renaissance city for a long time and I consider myself a Renaissance artist in the sense that classical sense that I'm interested in everything. Everything is art. My band's called Tributary. We're out there um, making paintings. I've spent a lot of time in my car. It's, sometimes it's called the studio on wheels. And I drive and I find things. Sometimes I'm, I'm building up a piece. I'll start a small painting and then I'll add another piece of paper and another piece of paper. And I, I do a lot with handmade paper. So I come up with a sculptural piece at the end and, and a landscape that's realistic. Kind of a good example, like conglomeration of pieces. Like I started really small, ended up in this parking lot one day um, in the suburbs and sketched the trees. What's your job when you sit down in front of a blank slate? I just want someone to be intrigued by the piece. I think you can make a painting and twist reality. You can play with it like a piece of clay, add touches of the story. To me, that's very important, is, is layering the, the metaphor so that it's almost timeless. I um, found this broken piece of a fan and uh, a man came up to me. They found his little boy there dead right exactly where I was standing. And um, I, that's where the whole thing changed for me. We need artists to balance out everything in the world. We were the first doctors, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, I got his book over here. He was the first doctor. He, he could have been killed for stealing bodies and dissecting them. There's something unique about everything that we do. You know, at every moment that we live, there's an opportunity to take advantage of, you know. That's one, I think, aspect of this painting back here where the road splits. It's like there's so many times in your life where go this way, that way, or whatever, and you follow your heart and um, really throw yourself into the process of living and uh, you, you know, find out what you can accomplish. And I'd really like to see everyone try that. You know, it would be an amazing thing. We're creating what's probably the biggest urban farm project I've seen so far. Hey, so I just found out that this building over here is uh, where they filmed the uh, lunch factory scene in 8 Mile. Makes me want to freestyle again. Are you ready? Are you ready? No, I'm not going to do it. Up there and tag it again. So there's this staircase, there's a the center one, and there's one at the far end. Whoa. No arm rail. Be careful. Okay, so I'm here in Detroit and I'm here to meet Michael, who's an awesome photographer and an actor. Anesthesia anywhere near him. Age 41 years. He argued that we would never be. I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. By the end of my first semester and my first political science class, I was done with that. So I got into a, a, a decent uh, business to business sales job. That's where my gut started to go. I went down to 115 pounds. I weigh 140 now. What did, uh, what did the doctor say was the prognosis? It wasn't good because I was not responding to treatments and uh, they had uh, socialized medicine for people in my situation and that saved my life. Once I made the decision to start working in film and doing anything creative that I could, that did a lot up here, which did a lot down here. And my buddy Derry called me up and told me that there was going to be an audition for a micro-budget zombie film. I, they liked the way that I read the part. You don't need to tell me, son. I put two slugs <laughs> in Mr. Cooper. 
each thing I did allowed me to go on to the next thing. Like doing the vampire movie got me on to Hostel Part 3. Hostel Part 3 got me in a whole bunch of other stuff, including fetish modeling of all things. And the fetish modeling got me into photography. At Michigan Medical Marijuana Magazine was my first cover. This got into the Damned exhibition two years ago. Those got the attention of uh, a couple of uh, producers of adult content and Exotica. I do things to upset people, not arouse them. I want my art to play with codes. I, I want to take pictures that aren't necessarily shocking, but jarring enough to get people to think about the assumptions that they've made about certain ideas or symbols. I got started with this. It's not about the equipment. It's not about the tech. It's not about how much money you spend or how much money you spent on your education or which school you went to. It's about how much you paid attention to that education. So my take is it's pretty contrasty over here. It's it's beautiful and ugly, it's ruined but in development, and uh, it's diverse but separated. And uh, if you are wondering, I did enter a rap uh, competition. Uh, there were seven other people, placed 10th. Don't you think that one day you would be him too, out there in your game, trying to follow through? Through. Watched it right in front of me.